This is the original Pixel that launched in 2016, and this is the Pixel 9 releasing next month. Nine generations in, and the Pixel's design language has changed drastically. But Google's goal for the Pixel remained the same. You see, this was more than just a phone for Google. It was a strategic move to showcase the pure Android experience. Despite its small market share, the Pixel became a fan favorite with a loyal user base. Google's vision for Pixel has always centered around groundbreaking AI features, but today, every major company is heavily investing in AI. So this raises the question, has the Google Pixel lost its shine? When the Pixel and Pixel XL released, it marked a big shift for Google from its Nexus line to a more controlled hardware software integration. It set a new standard for Android phones in terms of software experience and camera performance. It makes sense that Google, the owner of Android, would want to show the world what a pure Android experience could be, especially considering how good of a job their biggest competitor, Apple, does with the iPhone. So let's get into Google's strategy behind the Pixel, its success, but also struggles, and some questionable decisions by Google that lead me to think that the future of the Pixel is up in the air. I don't necessarily mean that the Pixel is just going to be a bad phone in the future, but it's just getting harder to differentiate it from and make it special from other phones. If you know Google's reputation for discontinuing products and services that don't make them enough money, you'll wonder why Google kept it around. In terms of market share, the Pixel doesn't even come close to other phones, even though those numbers have grown over the years, particularly in the United States. But Google is and has been playing the long game with the Pixel. Having control of the hardware and software would allow them to lead and shape the development of Android. They could set the standard for what an Android phone could be and what it should be. And that's exactly Exactly what they've done. As I mentioned earlier, when they first released, Pixels were praised for their AI features. In particular, the built-in Google Assistant that allowed users to interact with the AI-powered assistant, but also the amazing low-light performance and HDR on the cameras, thanks to machine learning. Shortly after though, Google Assistant was introduced to other Android phones and fast forward to today, many phones have great cameras that use AI and machine learning to enhance image and video quality, but more on that shortly. Despite the small market share, the Pixel's value to Google is significant. Not only does it force other Android manufacturers to step it up and make the most out of Android, but it also served as a way to get users to use more Google services. And as we all know, Google is in the business of knowing and selling all of our information. Getting users to use services like Google Drive, Maps, Gmail, and Photos is huge for them. So much so that till this day, Pixel phones go on sale a month or two after being released for steep discounts too. Like Pixel users know not to upgrade upon release because if you wait just a month or two, wait around for the holiday season, they'll likely be on sale for a big discount. So this is Google's strategy and it's worked so far, but along the way, they've made some questionable decisions that make me wonder what the future of the Pixel looks like. I really do like the Pixel lineup, but I think Google is going to need to offer something more with the Pixel in order to compete in the market going forward. In 2021, they switched their SOCs to their own Tensor chips from previous Snapdragon ones. These much less powerful chips turbocharge Google's AI efforts. Switching to Tensor would allow them to make on-device AI smarter and more immersive. And to be fair, they have added features that are handled on device, so at least to some extent, the switch is justified. But at the cost of performance. Many users question this move. I'm one of those people that cares more for real world performance over what a spec sheet says. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I didn't care to see a nice spec sheet, but I'd still pick real functionality over that any day. Some users though have reported overheating and performance issues. I personally don't use my phone for super demanding tasks like gaming or editing, but occasional photo editing here and there, but nothing crazy. But that doesn't mean I'm fully convinced that Google's move to Tensor was purely to enable on-device AI capabilities. I think it was more of a move to save some money because a lot of the Pixel features are still handled on the cloud, sometimes because the features demand a lot of computing power and could cause things like significant battery drain. So it leads me to think that Google largely made the switch to increase profit margins, and then also they can handle a lot of AI tasks on device. And there's nothing wrong with that. They're a business. It makes sense that they want to increase profits. So what am I complaining about? I'm not. I haven't used the Pixel 6 or 7, so I can't speak to the performance on those phones. Uh, I personally 
wasn't bothered by the performance on the Pixel 8 when I switched to it. However, the flagship Pixels are now starting at $999, which is the starting price for other flagship phones like the iPhone Pro lineup and Samsung Galaxy lineup. On top of that, it also seems like they're aiming for more market share now. So when these flagship phones are beating the Pixel in terms of performance and offering similar AI features, what's the Pixel's calling for? In 2024, with three generations of the Tensor out and the fourth coming in August with the Pixel 9, it begs the question, what will the Pixel offer that other Android devices, even iOS devices, can't? Top of the line chips like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and A17 Pro have better performance than the Tensor but they also have on-device capabilities. To make it even worse, the upcoming Tensor G4 seems to continue the same pattern of underwhelming performance. Like I said before, I care more about real-world performance, but when you're paying $1,000 for a phone, I'd want it to at least compare to other devices in that price range. No one wants to feel like they're getting played out of their money. By the way, there's still many exclusive Pixel features, but I'm thinking long-term here, and there's still the argument on the clean user interface experience, but just humor me right quick. In a world where all companies add similar AI features and handle them on device, I mean, we're seeing it happen in real time. Apple just announced many AI features on WWDC that have been on Android forever, and the cycle will just continue back and forth. So if the playing field is leveled in that regard, what's the Pixel's unique characteristic going to be? What's gonna give it that edge over other phones? Well, we might start seeing a glimpse of that in 2025. See, there's rumors of Google switching to TSMC for the Tensor chips in 2025 with the Pixel 10. For those that don't know, the Tensor chip designed by Google has been produced by Samsung since they were first introduced. This was in part because another chip made by Samsung, the Exynos, was used as a foundation for the Tensor chip. With the Tensor G5, assuming they'll be keeping the same naming scheme, it will use the three nanometer architecture. Without getting too technical, the three nanometer architecture is a chip design that will improve performance, power efficiency, and space utilization. So let's say that in 2025, the Tensor chips catch up to its rivals in terms of performance, and companies are competing to bring the best AI features to its users instead of just focusing on purely performance. Why go Pixel? Will the pure Android experience and user interface alone be worth it? I guess there's no real way of knowing until we get there, but I just wanted to put these thoughts out there and see what the community thinks. You see, other phone manufacturers face the same issue. What's going to make consumers choose their phone over the next good option? But the Pixel has had that unique AI magic to itself for some time, and soon every phone out there will have that. Also, with the switch to TSMC, what does this mean for the sales of the Pixel 9 that won't have the redesigned Tensor chips? Are the AI features enough this year? The camera? The user interface, maybe? We'll know more about the Pixel 9 when Google hosts their event on August 13th, which is coming up. Okay, so I don't think the Pixel is just going to stop selling for Google. It's still a great phone, but it needs to evolve. And I'm hoping that with the switch to TSMC, it'll be a good stepping stone. More than a stepping stone, a big leap forward, actually. I think that Google should lean more into a seamless Android experience with their control over the hardware and software instead of only focusing on AI features that will inevitably be copied. AI features will literally take over all of our smartphones and devices all over the next few years. So the edge that Pixel once had will be a lot less. They could just try to make their AI features superior to others, but I think they'll need more going forward. Their control over Android and redesigned tensor chip could keep the Pixel as the gold standard for what an Android device should be. And I know how passionate people get about their favorite devices, so feel free to share your opinion below. 